How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and yes, I am sunburned. Please leave your comments down below and let me know on a scale from one to roasted lobster. What do I look like? That is not what I want you to notice that's new in this video. I want you to notice this new mic. No more sock filter, no more blue Yeti. We have an actual setup here with an actual pop filter. So hopefully the audio does sound better. Let me know down below. But today we are going to be taking a look at some subscriber builds. Keyword build. This is respect all builds. We are going to be looking at people who actually took the time, effort, and money and actually threw horsepower at their car. Wheels and lowering springs ain't a build. So if anybody submitted their car and said that they got the K&N with some chopped springs and some fucking JNCs, that's not a build. We're taking a look at the real hardcore builders. Let's go ahead and dive right in. If you guys want me to roast your guys' cars, let's get this video to 7,000 likes. You guys can do that very easily. Once you hit the like button, submit your car to my Gmail, drewpeacock.clips at gmail.com, and it should end up in that roast. Anyways, let's dive right in. First car is a 1995 Honda Civic Si, similar to mine. Mine is a 92 though. We got an EG hatch here. We got a vented hood. I see an intercooler already. That's a great start. Uh, are we betting B series, K series, or even D series? I want to see. I'm going to bet B series on this one. I haven't read the build sheet or anything. Fuck, I was wrong. It's a K series. It's a K series, single turbo. He's got the skunk manifold. Um, he's got hood exit. And he has it looks like Cerakoted or at least painted in like an olive green. He's got an auto power cage, Sparco seat, Sparco harness, Sparco steering wheel. He's a carbon hood. Front fenders are 20 millimeters wider. His interior looks fully fledged race car. No passengers. Dude gets no bitches. Just kidding. You pull up in something like this, you're guaranteed to be laying some pipe that night. The engine is a K20A, 2045 CC. Damn, he's got like a whole fucking brochure. He's got BC stage two camshafts. His heads are ported and polished. ARP head studs, turbo smart 60 millimeter wastegate, 2000 CC injectors. That's a lot of fuel. He has a GTX 3586 RS turbo. And he has a coil racing cooling system. Let's look at the car some more. Where's the hole for this? Oh, wait, this is his in intake pipe. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, he doesn't have a filter. Oh, it just filters straight in from the vent. Holy shit. Homeboy's got it figured out. Dude, that thing is clean. That thing is super clean. If I do end up turboing my Honda, I will have to get wider fenders like that because that looks fucking sick. Is it is it white paint or is it like a cement gray? I can't tell. It looks clean. Either way, no hate looks fucking clean. I don't see a single thing on this EG that I don't like. Well, besides the no filter. I would definitely run a filter unless this is a track only car. Definitely put a filter on your car. It's pushing 40 PSI through it it's on E85, 9,000 RPM. Holy crap, weighs 2,200 pounds. The key to winning races, power to weight ratio. That's a sick setup. Hopefully one day my EG looks like that. Next car, it said Mustang PP1 Sleeper. So it's a new S550, but he's claiming it's a sleeper. Let's see what he's got done to it. So we see the exterior looks stock. He's got the performance pack wheels, which I always liked on the Mustangs. I think they always did look good, but stock exterior, nothing in your face, nothing saying, hey, look at me, I got a huge cock. So Let's see why he's calling it a sleeper. All right, more pictures. He's got little, little louvers on there. I saw an EcoBoost with those exact louvers today. Not a huge fan of them. Okay, we see a Vortec with a Vortec intercooler. Okay. We have still stock looking intake manifold, which I think if this is an 18 and up is like the best intake manifold that Ford has ever thrown on a fucking vehicle. So not a bad setup. But can you call a S550 Mustang with a loud ass Pro Charger? A sleeper? I don't know if you can really call it that. Now, if you debadged it and made it into like an EcoBoost, maybe, but I'm having a hard time calling this one a sleeper. Still a very cool build, but I don't know if I would call it a sleeper. All right, next car, we got a 300ZX. It's a 1993 JDM 300ZX. He's got Enki RPF1s. Looks like he's changing out some sort of intercooler, so I'm guessing it's the twin turbo model. My bad. Slotted and drilled brakes. It's a clean 300ZX. We don't see really clean ones here in SoCal. Sadly, because they are one of my favorite Nissans. I've always liked how just wide and thick they look. Slammed, well, I don't know if I'd say slammed. Lowered on some uh, coilovers. This looks like exhaust work, just by the flanges, but it looks kind of thin, unless it's an illusion, but that looks like two and a half inch. Some sort of transmission he's tossing in. Let's read his description. 2.5 inch, I called it. Two, uh, <laughs> it's a 2.5 inch Z1 Catalyst downpipe and test pipe, Z1 intercooler, Z1 intake, trust, Greddy axle back, Greddy Profic 
electronic boost controller, max peating rods, coilovers, aftermarket FUCA and adjustable tension rods, and key RPF1s, centric drilled and slotted rotors. Love to see these JDM legends still staying alive. Here we have a Ford Focus RS that is making 487 all wheel horsepower, something I don't definitely expect here in SoCal, but people that have big gonads, they're doing this elsewhere. Sadly, the California car scene just seems to suffer a lot. We have a lime green RS with a lot of forged carbon on it. We have a forged carbon steering wheel, forged carbon wide body arches and other aero parts. This is how it looked, I guess, when he first got it. Uh, that wing is really fucking weird looking and it looks like it's on bags. Which I don't know if I would want 500 wheel horsepower on bags because that sounds really sketch. The forged carbon is cool, but it's just like, if you're gonna do it, paint match it or something i don't know it just kind of looks like you just poorly tossed it on like i get it's expensive material and it looks great and it's, it, it looks cool how the lights are reflecting through it but like there's got to be a better way to just slap it on than just seeing big black tumors hanging off your car like that's just what i think because it just it just looks out of place it's cool and i mean it looks aggressive the car makes sweet power it's a sick build i just really wish there was a way you can like you know more detail oriented hide it and make it flow a bit better than just looking like i said like a you know a bolt-on tumor or something like that let me know your opinion down below on forged carbon or especially carbon wide bodies paint match paint match with some exposed carbon or just leave it exposed and flex the carbon everyone has their own tastes and that's okay this guy didn't just build a show car he built a little bit of a race car too so it's probably a really fun driver it looks cool there's not much to complain about on this one i am being nitpicky although that like fucking master chief visor awning shit the little patio back there that's a bit much how long is that that's like a three foot long wing <laughs> holy crap it's a sweet car though no doubt a very sweet car all right now this is crazy i'm having a little bit of a hard time believing that this is one of your guys's cars but this is a 2000 plus wheel horsepower mark IV super and before you guys complain and say that they come stock with a thousand and this guy must have just put like a you know an, an, a K&N on it and just up the power just like that they don't come with a thousand horsepower obviously and I can only imagine how expensive this build was I'm gonna take some guesses on what he's got done to it I'm gonna guess billet block I'm gonna guess a Ford 8.8 rear end um he's obviously on some 15 inch wheels I'm guessing a bigger than stock brake kit and, a, I mean, obviously a gigantic turbo. Usually people with high horsepower supers tend to go dual or twin turbo, but we'll see. Let's, let's, let's see if I got any of that right. All right, first photo, very orgasmic. He has the same headlight setup that I do. Um, great minds think alike, although I will never make this much power in my car. I just can't imagine, I just can't imagine it. So that's so much money right there. All right, looking at the motor, I see some billet shit. Let's, can I zoom in? Uh, I see a lot of shiny aluminum and stuff, so. It, Hard to tell, hopefully there's a build sheet. Gigantic turbo, no filter. I don't even know if I can complain at this point because the car is making 2000 horsepower. I don't know if there's a filter on earth that can flow that much air. Look at all the pie cuts on that fucking exhaust. It's got a five inch hood exit, Jesus Christ. Whole rear gutted, aftermarket fuel cell. Uh, this looks like some sort of breather or cooling thing. I don't know, there's hoses that are running to it. I'm trying to picture what that is. He's got a full roll cage, aluminum seats, giant bead locks. Wait, oh, sh wait, wow. okay, this must be different from the last photo because he's got an exhaust coming out the back, but we already know that nothing comes out of there because he's got a hood exit, so I don't know what that exhaust is doing. All right, hopefully he has a description and he didn't just rip off these photos on Instagram or something. Hopefully this is a real guy. He says, billet block 2JZ with a turbo 400 combo, precision turbo pro mod 98105, single stage N2O. He said no nitrous right here though. It's a three to one pro mod manifold, three to one burns collectors, titanium up pipe, Motec M150 C127 dash, race grade level loom package, injector harness, quick disconnect, auxiliary sensor expansion, a whole lot of shit plus 64 pounds of boost to make 2171 wheel horsepower. When can you use that? At the track, I guess. All right, next car, and don't judge a book by its cover on this one. You look at this car and you think, Nah, 90s shitbox. Some old geezer threw some slicks on this bad boy and is calling it a day. That is not the case. First of all, those are some huge ass slicks. Like, huge. They're sticking out past the fender. And then he's got itty bitty tires up front. Underneath the hood, it is a 454 with a .030 bore. So he's got all the leaders under there. He painted it in Chevrolet orange, which... 
I think he could have done a better job of doing, but you know what? When you have that much motor and your car is so unassuming, who gives a fuck? He's got new comp cams with a 0.500 lift, 750, a double pump Holly carb, a 700 R4, and 315 Mickey Thompsons, and he had to cut his fenders, which I believe, because I mean, look at all the meat back there. It's a cheap drag build, and it costed him so far a whopping $5,500. You don't need a lot of money to build a fast car. All these goofballs that are saying, oh man, Drew, you're bowling people. What if they just don't have the money? What if they can't do it? Put your mind to it. Work that minimum wage and fucking get your money. You can do it. It's you who's stopping yourself, no one else. All right, next car. Now he put respect all builds, but it better be a build. It's a Dodge Stealth. Now let's read his build list. He says, new radiator. It's a Mishimoto, all right, that's fine. Full exhaust. Okay, I guess that's a good start. It's better than just saying k and um, He says stage two clutch. I mean, I guess that is like a, sort of a mod, but it's kind of more like preventive maintenance, I guess. It's like saying, you know, aftermarket fucking front main seal or something. I don't, I don't know. It's just kind of weird to, to say that. It's on a standalone, which is good. You can, you know, the, the tunability of those is way better probably than what Mitsubishi had offered. And some minor stuff when he rebuilt the engine, such as a lighter crank pulley. More to come, but he just picked it up. Okay, I mean, you, you didn't list your headers, so I'll give you a pass on that. I mean, I guess it does count as exhaust, but you didn't list your headers, and it looks a little bit like an aftermarket intake there, so it's a good start, but you still have a ways to go, young Padawan. Take all of your life earnings and pour it in there. It's a great financial decision. Probably not. Don't, don't listen to me. It's cool, though, because you don't see Dodge stealths too much. So, someone has a clean example of one, and that's good to know. All right. This, I get so many Golf and GTI submissions that it's inevitable for one to pop up. And I, I, I mean, I passed a couple just because they didn't fit the criteria, but let's look at this one really quick. So we got a sort of a stance boy, but not really. Like he's got the stance boy wheels. He's got the rack. He's got some carbon or like half a wrap. I'm not sure what's going on, but he has a Cobb access port tune. He has a catalyst downpipe, turbo back exhaust system, front mount intercooler, a cold air intake, Godspeed coilovers, and three SDM.0518 by eight and a half wheels. Disclaimer, in middle of wrapping car by himself. Gotta love the grind, man. Gotta get out there and take photos of your car half wrapped. It doesn't look bad. If you leave the bumper exposed like that, kind of looks sort of sick, I guess. I don't know but you definitely got to finish the rest of the car. It's not bad. It looks sort of aggressive, but at the same time, I mean, how aggressive can you make an egg? Here we go. We have a two valve Mustang and it makes 500 wheel horsepower. He says it looks like trash, but it hauls ass. Oh, it definitely looks like trash. Jesus, the, I, I see why you started with this photo. It is far away. This is a, a trick. If your car looks like shit, here's how to take great photos. Stand about two kilometers back, take it far away, don't zoom in and just, let the observer fill in the blanks. Like right here, I think, oh, you know, it looks pretty good. Probably has a decent looking front end, but in this photo, it is, it is missing half of that front end. He's got a giant intercooler though. He's got a Vortex supercharger on it. It runs a 12.8 in the uh, quarter mile and it has more room for more power. It's missing a headlight, will be an air duct to the blower. So that's cool. Lots of mods, including heads, cams, pistons, rods, one piece drive shaft, just to name a couple. He has more here. I'm not going to go through and read all this because you guys want to see builds. But if you're really interested in it, pause it, take a look at it and see what this guy's running. There is some guy out there that is modding a 2002 Nissan Maxima. And he's doing a decent job at it. He's got Anki RPF1 wheels. He lowered this motherfucker. He's got a little intake, maybe a little intake manifold too. We'll read his build list in a second. Obviously, I'm not familiar with the platform because I don't know anyone dumb enough to mod one of these, but let's see what he did and let's see if it holds up. He's got a 350Z steering wheel with a Mishimoto shift knob. So it's a manual. Leather interior, which also look like out of a 350Z. They definitely don't look like Nissan Maxima seats. It's not that bad. I mean, honestly, it's, it's not a bad looking car. It's better than an Altima, in my opinion, because the Altima is just... This is a different breed of crazy drivers, but it's actually a decent looking little Nissan sedan. I don't know crap about this platform, but if it makes power, it makes power. Let's read his build list really quick. He has a 2017 Gen 2 a VQ35DE, so it sounds like he has an engine swap out of a G35. So is it rear wheel drive or what? Or did, did he side mount that bitch? What? OBX headers and custom three inch Y-pipe, full three inch exhaust, 
Admin 4-inch intake GTR injectors, AM fuel pump, tuned on E85, NIS Foreman Stage 2 clutch, NIS Foreman's clutch line, blah, 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 Infinity I35 cluster. So that's probably what the motor's out of. Megan or Megan coilovers, black and clear taillights. The reason why I say that is because some people get mad whether you say it one way or another. So I just say both. Please, everyone. Still in front lip, AE rear lip, 350Z steering wheel. It's actually more impressive than some of the other builds we've seen today that is pretty that is pretty cool i don't know if he's joking but he said in his subject part just a stock gt86 let's see if it's actually stock he put a yawning emoji so if i'm yawning through this shit, i gonna be very upset first photo does look like a very stock looking gt86 he's got aftermarket bronze wheels it does look lowered which is fine it's right hand drive and i see a cage so that's a good start it's a pretty good Yeah, yeah. If if this was a, if this is stock, let's say Toyota sold it like this, I would have ten. Stock GT86, huh? With the two JZ GTE engine, Garrett GTX 38. My bad, 3582 custom oil lines, uh, top mount manifold. He's got a 50 millimeter screamer wastegate. He's got a tile external wastegate, 90 millimeter throttle body, HKS purple fuel route. He's got a lot of shit. He's got a lot of dude if how shocked would you be you see this basic looking gt86 cruising around and then he just blows your fucking doors off with what let's see how much power does he say how much power he makes i could probably guess he's got a cd 009 that's a good trans you can hold great power in those funk motorsport turbo blanket and wire protection that's what i got good choice ACT clutch. He doesn't say, okay, 1,000 cc injectors. That's on a little bit of the lower end. You can still make good power. So, I mean, he's still probably making 500 horsepower, which in that car would just be scary as shit. I can only imagine. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't blame him for probably cutting it there. Can you imagine a GT86 with like 1,000 horsepower? God, that would be scary. Sick ass build. Good job. All right, we'll do like one or two more. This isn't what I had in mind. When I said respect all builds, we were talking about builds. We're not talking about a sticker bombed Nissan Versa with toe straps and hearts hanging off of it. You better be trolling me. If you're... I don't think they're trolling me. I think they're actually driving around in this thing. Have my videos done nothing to help you not drive something like this? Like, you could mod out your car however you want, and other people's opinions, fuck them, right? So my opinion does not matter. But, at the end of the day, do you look at this car and think, I'm doing great. Like, I just, ah, oh, I don't know, man. That's a lot of stickers. That's a lot of attention. But whatever, man, you know, Rocket, do you. Oh, my God. Let, let, let's read his description really quick. He says, I know you don't like stickers, but I put your Super 1 on the trunk if that makes you feel better. That does. By no means do I call this a true build, but here's my 2017 Nissan Versa SV my mom bought for me. Put her on some custom BC coilovers, 18 by 7.5 NK J10s, and had an exhaust, but too many driveway scrapes and it broke off, so currently mufferless. That would hurt my ears. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know what? At least he's being honest. He doesn't consider it a build. He understands I don't like stickers. So, thumbs up. I want to see if I could see. He said he has the Super One on the trunk. Oh, it's right there. Look at that. There's my Supra. I like it now. All right, we'll do one more. Last one right here. First thing is an engine shot. Guys, comment down below. What is this an engine from? Look at it. Comment down below your guesses. What is it? All right, now that you guys have commented, it is a new Edge Mustang GT. He's got a Cobra Terminator front bumper, aftermarket headlights. He actually has a bumper, which is a step up from the, the last new edge we saw. No plates, though, because uh, fuck everyone. And fuck the police, apparently. Cobra-style wing, which is, in my opinion, the best fucking wing on, on these cars. The, the Cobra, just from factory, I think is one of the best-looking Mustangs right out of the box. You don't have to do anything to it to make it look cooler. It just looks cool. His wheel setup is decent. I, I like the, uh, the concavity in the rear. The multi-spoke does work good. It just looks like it's sitting a little high, but if you got power to back it up and it's going to squat, which uh, it looks like it will, then he probably needs that. 
He says it's a fully built Mustang GT and it makes around 550 wheel horsepower on only eight pounds of boost, which is really impressive. It has a 3.7 inch pulley. It makes 600 on 10 pounds of boost. He's got manly rods and pistons, stage four comp cams, pro charger, V2, supercharger, intercooled forge crank, dual fuel pump setup with a booster pump, 1300 CC injectors, her short throw shifter, fully built T56 trans, stage four McLeod clutch, 355 rear gears, long tubes, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. The little new wedge that could. I like it. I always just hated how Pro Chargers intercoolers sit. They look slanted. They just mount crooked. This one looks really fucking slanted, so maybe it's mounted wrong. But one thing you can definitely do, which is what I did in mine, was I cut my bumper a little bit so you can actually get more airflow to it. And I cut my uh, my bash bar, my cross member, my little like bumper thing. I cut that too. I cut it in half so I had even more flow just to make sure. I mean, if you get in an accident, you're probably going to get fucked up anyway. So that little itty bitty little bar ain't going to save you much anyways. Or you get a tubular one. That's even a better route. But you could do that or you can cut like the holes and clean it up really nice so that way you have the holes coming through. Definitely get more airflow, probably make more power. But a sweet build to end on nevertheless. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys want to see your car in one of these videos, send it to my Gmail, drewpeacock.clips at gmail.com. Hit like button let's get this video to 7,000 likes that'll be uh, light work for you guys just click it. it takes two seconds anyways let's do it go check out yesterday's video you'll see why i'm super sunburned until next video peace